Crafty Crafty, please do hit that subscribe button below and make sure that you also click on the little bell to turn your notifications on. It will let you know every time I upload a new tutorial. It's completely free to subscribe and it's well worth doing. So today we're going to be using printable iron on dark to make this really cute photo makeup bag. You can use any picture, any photo you want and it's for use with dark materials. So today we're going to look at printable iron on dark so we need to get our design. So we're going to go to upload, we're then going to upload image. We can then browse for our image or our photo. I'm going to use a photograph today. So this is my photograph of Bisley when he was very, very little. You can see he's up against a iPad there. That is how small he was. We're going to save him as a complex image so we don't lose any of the detail. We can then go to continue. I'm not going to remove anything today, I'm just going to print it as a photo. So we're going to go to continue. I'm going to save as a print and cut and I'm just going to change the image name to Bisley. And then we can save. We can then click on the image and insert. So the image is now on our Design Space Canvas. As always, you do need to remember that the largest size you can do as a print and cut is 9.25 inches by 6.75 inches. I'm actually going to make mine in height at 5.5, 5, 4.5 inches. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a shape and I'm just going to grab a square. And I want the square to be the same size as my picture. So that's 5.806 in width. So I'm just going to unlock it. And I'm going to put 5.806. And I'm then going to put 4.5. And press enter. And I'm then going to lock it. I'm then going to change the height to 5 inches and it will automatically change the width so that it's all in proportion. I then want to arrange my picture and move to front and I'm just going to bring it over, I'm going to highlight and I'm going to align to center. I'm then going to duplicate it. So I'm just going to work with the duplicate for a minute and all I'm going to do is just make the picture just a little bit smaller and again I'm going to align it and I'm going to align to center and then I'm going to highlight both and I'm going to slice. I'm then just going to slice away the inside. I can then bring my picture over and you'll see I've got a border. Now the reason I don't slice it exactly as it is and I make the picture slightly smaller is you always have to leave a little bit of room for trial and error and of course HTV can shrink as well. So giving the border just that little bit more space will make it a bit easier for you. So I'm then just going to remove this one so you can see that my border is a cut, which is fine because I want that as a HTV. And then my picture is a print and cut. So we can then go to make it. Now with printable iron on light, you mirror it just like you do with ordinary iron on or HTV. However, with printable iron on dark, you don't. Now you do always need to read the instructions depending on who you're getting it from because they will vary slightly so please make sure you always read the instructions but the general rule with printable iron on dark is that you do not mirror. However I do need to mirror my HTV. We can then go to continue. So just like with iron on light you really want to use a inkjet printer. You will be able to find printable iron on dark for laser printers. But again, if you haven't got a color one, you're best off just sticking with an inkjet. And most printable iron ons, whether they be light or dark, 
they are for an inkjet printer you would need to search for a laser print one I'm going to send it to my inkjet and I'm going to cut it on the printable iron on dark setting so this is the printable iron on dark again this is from GM crafts but I also use the Cricut printable iron on dark and I use the Avery brand as well with the GM Crafts printable iron on dark you'll find that you have a gridded side and you have a plain side you want to print on the plain side so you can see it's all printed out we've got our registration marks now because it's an inkjet you do really want to allow it to dry for 10 minutes but just like with the printable iron on light any of the print and cuts I find, and I don't know if it's my ink, but if I leave it to dry too long, the machine struggles to pick up the registration marks. So I put it on my mat and I go in with my fabric brayer or a non-stick roller and I just make sure that that is adhered. I do try and avoid my registration marks. And what I do is I cut it out and then I let it have its 10 minutes to dry before I think about adhering it. So that's cut and I've left it to dry for 10 minutes. So I'm then just going to come in and remove the outer first. I can then get my Cricut scraper and I'm just going to very gently start lifting it up. I'm also going to go and cut out my HTV. So the big difference with printable iron on dark, and again you do need to read the instructions depending on where you're getting it from, but with the GM Crafts one you pull back the backing. So you're going to remove the backing from your print. So as always I've got my Cricut Easy Press mat, I've got my fabric makeup bag here and I've got a homemade pressing pillow. I'm just going to place the pressing pillow inside of the bag and I'm just going to apply some heat to my fabric for five seconds just to remove any moisture. I'm then going to place my printable iron on dark onto my fabric and just work out where I want it to sit. You will notice that my image is face up. This is because we've peeled away the backing and it's the other side of our image that's actually going to adhere itself. This is why you do not mirror printable iron on dark in design space. But as I say, please do always check the instructions. We're then going to place a Teflon sheet over. We're going to go in at 160 degrees Celsius for 30 seconds with our easy press. We can then remove our Teflon sheet. I've then got my glitter HTV and I'm just going to come and place that over. And I've just increased the temperature on my easy press for 170 degrees Celsius, but for 20 seconds. Again, I'm just going to place my Teflon sheet over. I can then come in and remove the carrier sheet from my glitter HTV. And then just to make sure everything is fully adhered, I've reduced the temperature on my easy press back down to 160 degrees Celsius and I'm just going to go in for 20 seconds and make sure that that is fully adhered.